Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Vijay and I am a Microsoft MVP in SharePoint. In today's video we will discuss about SharePoint framework crowd operation using no javascript framework. If you are new to SharePoint framework then check out my previous videos that is on how we can set up uh, your SPFX framework for development and then also I have created videos for uh, how we can create a web part and then how we can deploy it. Apart from that also I have created various other videos on SPFX. I'll put a few links on the video description you can have a look at that. But especially you should look at how to uh, do the setup and how we can develop a, a SPFX web part. In this video we will uh, do from the scratch and then we will make something like uh, this one. So if you look at this uh, there are a table where we are displaying the data. Uh, there is project name, completion status, technology and then there are three buttons are there create, update and delete. So basically we are displaying the data in a tabular format and we have the button. So for example here you can see there are three uh, things are there project name, completion status which is a yes no field and uh, if it is completed you can select this one and then technology this is a choice field and it is coming from the particular uh, list columns or whatever the values are there it will come here and uh, once you click on create button so it will add the item if you will uh, modify something click on the button so to modify you have to select an item for example I will select this item and then I will update so it will update and then also same way I will select it and then I will click on delete and it will delete this so this is we are going to do it in this particular video but let me open uh, the SharePoint site where I have already deployed the code. We will see how exactly it looks like. Um, so if you look at here, okay, by any chance, if you want to learn SharePoint framework, I have a complete SharePoint framework training courses purely for the developers. And you can see there's 10 modules are there and you can check out each module. What are the contents and you can, I'll put the link. You can have a look at this and if you're interested, you can enroll for it. So uh, this is a, a modern page you can see here uh, this is the data uh, you can see and this is the list you can see here project name uh, is the column then there is completion status which is a yes no field and then there is technology which is a choice column having some values so if I'll just go to column settings you can see here these are the um, choices are there. Now you can see this is how it uh, looks like the data. If I will uh, let's say let me just refresh the page once and uh, you can see here I will uh, uh, project names uh, let's say I will give project uh, happen one completion let's say it's completed and it is on SPFX I'll click on create and uh, you can see here I got an alert and then you can see here project one added and same way if I'll select this project one you can see the value is populating I'll make it to two and I'll let's say I'll say power ups I'll click on update updated successfully and you can see this has been uh, changed same way if I will select this and I'll click on delete you can see here the data got deleted successfully so this is how the operation it will happen on this particular video I'll see the examples so now what I'll do is we will open the command prompt and we'll create a SPFX project here. So I will open node.js command prompt you can see here I did run as administrator and then you can see here I'll go to the D drive um, and then I will go to uh, SPFX there is a folder available on that and in this uh, folder we will create a subfolder where our solution will be there. So I'll say md let's say crowd uh, one and then I'll go to this folder crowd one and here we will run the command which will create our project. So I'll say yo uh, r threat uh, Microsoft slash SharePoint and uh, you can see here it will now ask us couple of things. Uh, you can see so it is asking us the solution name let it be the solution name SharePoint online latest which is selected so if you are using SharePoint online you can select this one if you are using SharePoint 2016 uh, or 2019 or online you can also select these options so other options so you have this 
um, the latest version it is showing you can see here SharePoint 2019 if you want to work you can select this option and then I'll select SharePoint online use the current folder and we don't want to deploy to all sites immediately so I'll select no here same way I don't require these things and uh, now next thing is uh, you can select web part extension or library in this case it is web part which is already selected click over there then you can see it is asking us the web part name uh, click on hello world by default this is the web part name and uh, this is the description hello world description let it be and in this case we will see no javascript from mark i'll also make separate videos which will be for react uh, so it will come next now you can see here i'll select no javascript framework uh, it will take some time and then it will uh, um, it will create all the folders everything it will add the node modules everything and then i'll come back now you can see here our uh, project got created uh, two things uh, we have to run here one thing is uh, we need to install jquery and the other one is the pnp i have used for to communicate with sharepoint that's the insert of the delete whatever it is so you can i will just copy here you can see i'll just paste it um, so it will now install jquery over there and then we will use this npm uh, pnp command so once this will over you can see here it is over I will put it here in PM, uh, PNP1 so it will install this PNP in our uh, project or the solution. So it is done uh, now both the things has been done so I will next we will open this on uh, uh, in the code editor for example I will I am using here Visual Studio code uh, if you have not installed it in you can install in your local machine so I will say code space and dot uh, it will open the solution will open in uh, visual studio code you can see here um, and we have couple of files important files are there so if you'll go to the source web part and this is the hello world uh, web part dot ts file and you can see here by default these things are there uh, description and this is the render things um, so if you will by this time if you will run this uh, gulp serve command let me just show you so gulp serve it will the default thing will come uh, which is you can see this is the default thing uh, the, the default web part which will appear if you click over here hello world web part and this is what you will see here now so what I'll do is I have uh, the project here so this is what is the uh, uh, things that you need to install and this is how you can create the project now we have uh, you can see here we have uh, where we will uh, modify the render method and uh, uh, in the scss uh, uh, class we'll modify and we'll add something here so the same thing i have uh, another code um, uh, solution is there so i'll explain it from there because i cannot i, I don't want to make this video too long um, so I have the code and I have written a complete blog post for the same so you'll get, I'll put the link in the video description you will get the code also there so let me just open that uh, I will stop this so you can just type control C and just yes so you can see here it is stopped now um, I have this project here you can see here uh, I will explain this code because uh, ultimately you know uh, this code you will get it so for this particular thing you can see here i have imported the statements here first of all this jquery and then these are the things that we require to import uh, this all these are uh, we require in our uh, while working with uh, the particular code to insert update and delete from the sharepoint list now um, then if you look at so uh, here we have the code we have the html that thing are there so uh, first thing if you'll see here by default what it is doing is when you will open this or when you will add this um, it will uh, two things it will do first of all uh, it will uh, you can see here uh, let me just open it here so if you'll see here the choices we are binding from the uh, list column um, uh, whatever the choices are there right so let's say this choice has uh, all this uh, for example um, these values like right? SharePoint, Power BI, Power Ops, Power Automate and SPFX. So in this case, these values are binding from that. So this we are binding and the next thing is we are binding the data. So two things we are doing on the 
page load than to whenever the web part will load so if you will look at this i'll just open it here so you can see here the choices so uh, these get choice fields are there and we are passing the url so website url i will just go here i'll go to the go to the definition and you can see we are getting the project details this is the list name and we are filtering the property uh, the column name as uh, technology and whatever the values are there we are adding into the key value pair so this is how you can you can bind it so whatever the response it will give let's say there are five items are there so for this five items so whatever the choices are there that till that much time this will run and we are binding the key value pair so by this time uh, it will uh, the the choices will be uh, made over there so the choices will be there uh, and next uh, thing you will see here uh, now let me just go to the top so you can see and uh, the next one is uh, we are getting the all the items from that and we are binding it so this items we are binding um, now uh, how we are doing that uh, if you will go back here let me just show you first of all so this get html so you can see um, this this method will contains the code which will bind all the items that tabular format it will do that you can see here uh, the web absolute url so we are getting the wave and then this is how we can get all the items so items dot get all you will get all the items and then return this dot dom in html so basically we are creating a div so the div will first one is you can see here the h1 we gave so the h1 is for uh, this one uh, is for this crowd up with no javascript and uh, then you can see uh, there is a table we are making the header and then here we are binding it and then this is the table which will return so we are binding this table over here and then you will see here there is the button so we have added three buttons on this and then this is the uh, text box and the uh, uh, input type choice that we uh, we took so radio button so for your name field we took one radio button here and then uh, there is the tech, uh, these choices right so as i said uh, these are the choices that we are uh, mapping it here you can see this is from here we are um, we are taking a kind of an array which will have all the items and then these are the options we are binding so once the binding is over if i will scroll up now we have the button things where on the you can see we are getting uh, the document uh, get element by id so we are taking the create button and we are adding the event li listener here so then you can see item add so it will add this and uh, then we are showing an alert then we are rendering it and we are making this thing clear so that the values will go and the same way there is an update so in the update we are doing an event uh, handler here this one you can see we need to first get uh, the the button right so if you look at uh, this one this button so whatever the radio button user will select for example i'll select this you can see here the values are binding so you can see we get by item so we are doing that so we are getting that id and uh, based on that only we are doing the update so whatever the id it will update and when it will update the completion status you can see here completed if it is completed true or false that's what because that's a true uh, or false field and we have to do that way um, and then you can see here we are doing an alert and this these things are blank the final one is deleted data so again the same thing we are adding the event listener here and we are getting the same id which uh, radio button the user selected or which radio button the user want to delete which record and then we are get by id and then we are saying deleted successfully and then we are rendering it and then the values we are making it clear now in the uh, you can see here uh, so you can see here another one is uh, uh, the update delete item right so if i will show you here if you'll select any uh, this one you can see um, then what is happening is it is binding this values so that's what we are doing here so update delete item let me show you where it is you can see here there is a tr and we have that radio button 
so on this basically so whenever a user will select that so we are taking that uh, id and we are basically populating the existing values let's say whatever the um, 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 we are again we are getting it from the sharepoint list so based on that id and we are populating the project name whether it is completed or um, and the, what is the technology both the things all three things we are populating here so that's what whenever you are selecting an item the values are populating there okay in the get uh, html i just wanted to show you one more thing uh, there's a method called a check status so as i said uh, you that uh, this uh, completion status and if you look at this list uh, it is yes no field so in this case but if you see here we are displaying completed or in progress now how that is happening so if you go to the check status we are sending the uh, uh, item uh, what is the completion status and if you go to the definition you can see here so if the value is uh, uh, if you can see here there is a, a value so it is basically it will come yes or no so if it is coming yes then we are saying it's completed else we are doing it in progress so that is the thing that we are doing here now let me just run it and then i will show you here so now to uh, run this one i'll show you just uh, in the sharepoint workbench so we have to go back one back here and then i'll go to the folder or uh, test uh, one and uh, then here we can run the gulp surf so you can see and uh, once we will uh, run this call some surf command so it will open our local workbench and we can open the sharepoint workbench and there we can add this web part so you can see here now our local workbench open here and if you click over here uh, you can see this is this web part is coming uh, but uh, to but the item you cannot see anything so for that we i will open the sharepoint workbench so you can see here this is in the same spfx blog uh, site and then if you click over here there is a hello world web part is there so you can see here this is the web part and by default when i put you can see the data let me uh, you can see here so anything if you want to do some operation let's say i will do project uh, 2 I'll say it's completed. It is on Power BI. I'll click on Create. You can see here created successfully, and then Project Two is there. So if I will select this one, I I'll just make it to three or twenty three. You can see here Project Three. It is on SPFX. I'll click on Update. You can see here, and the same thing. I'll select it. I'll click on Delete, and then the project got deleted. So this is the web part which it is in the SharePoint Workbench. So now if you want to upload this thing to your uh, either your tenant uh, app catalog or into your site collection app catalog then you need to create or you need to generate the package file. So for that what you'll do is let me stop it so I'll just press ctrl C and you can see here I will say yes and uh, I'll just take the command so gulp bundle zip this is the first command that you will run here so you can see here once it is successfully completed i will take this package solution command so you can see here it is going on still it is done so i'll just put it here you can see girl package and once it is done so if you look at here now this is our solution if i'll go to sharepoint you can see here test one dot pkg you can see here uh, one second so you can see here this is the package file it will open here uh, revile in file explorer you can see here this is the package file and this one you can upload into your tenant uh, catalog or your sharepoint uh, site collection uh, if you have a catalog there you can uh, for a, if you want to deploy it for a particular site collection you can also upload into your site collection app catalog so you can do that i have created separate videos for both of the things how you can create app catalog site uh, whether it is your tenant app catalog or your site collection app catalog i'll put the link in the video description you can have a look at that so this is how you can work with a crowd operation we saw with no javascript framework 
and if you want similar kind of videos then subscribe to our youtube channel you will get lot of free videos on sharepoint online office 365 spfx power platform all these videos you will get it free thank you and have a nice day